Hello, it's me, your mom. I know I was like, I'm gonna start posting every day. I'm sorry. I just like didn't want to do anything for the last week. I've like, you know, been kiltering out and you have like good days and you have bad days, but I can feel the wind under my wings. I can feel the happiness in the air. And I can honestly say that going on this medication has genuinely changed my life, you guys. And so because of that, we're gonna celebrate by taking like a lot of propagations today. We're gonna do so much. My bestie Devin is here. I know you love Devin. Hello everyone. Oh, you're too tall. Oh, okay. you're so tall. <laughs> Get yourself a Devin. So he's here and we are going to basically, well, if you didn't know, I always assume people watch every single one of my videos in order and know like what's going on, but no one does that. So I have this paludarium, which is like this, that isn't planted right now. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take like a ton of propagations of stuff and then we're gonna plant the box. And we're gonna make it look really nice um, and it's gonna be really fun. Devin and I both like to take propagations a lot. So last week I was like, hey, do you wanna come over and cut up all my plants? And I was like, hell yeah. So we just had coffee. The only thing is that I found mealies <laughs> on some of my plants today, which makes sense because I haven't really looked at my plants in like five days. So of course that would happen. They're only on the outside plants though, the plants that are in the real world, not in the boxes. We are gonna treat them and then we're gonna water some plants. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to take your meds and drink your water. I don't know, don't forget to go outside. Have you stood outside today? Touch grass. Go touch grass. <laughs> I feel like your bodyguard right now. Yeah? Don't touch her. <laughs> <laughs> you can be my bodyguard. I'll be your bodyguard. Everyone, it'll be unassuming. Ash, will protect me. Yeah, you'll be like talking to people and I'll be like, what'd you say? <laughs> Gosh, let's find where all the mealies are and make sure that we didn't miss anything. Okay, so originally there were mealies on my Hoya Carnosa Compacta. If you do watch my videos, you would know that from last week. And I treated them. That was like something we did together. Now, they're on the complete other side of the room. I don't know how that happens because I didn't interact with those plants at all. Like those plants are completely separate, but it definitely did. So basically we're gonna take a couple minutes. We're gonna look at everything, make sure we know where all the mealies are, and then we're gonna treat them. And then after that, we're gonna water some plants. Let me show you where the mealies are right now that I like know of. So this, this is the most obvious guy. He's sitting right there. Uh, he's just chilling. Unfortunately, I don't like him there. And then I was looking at Brooks Hoya, which I know everything needs water, you guys. Don't judge me, but this right here. There's a couple other spots in here, but like that's the most visible one. Yeah, I haven't dusted my plants yet since the winter. So honestly, it's completely my fault, <laughs> but yeah, so. That's just kind of like little signs. My first mealy bugs were on my Hoya Cardosic Impacta, right. which is ice I got before. Were they next to each other at all? Mm-mm. How long have you had these two? A long time. That Hoya I've had for since Brooke was here in August okay. of last year. And this one I've had since my birthday. Do mealies kind of start out towards the base of your plant usually, or do they? There's different kinds. There's like root mealies, which you can't see because they're like under the soil. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to unscrew the edge. End right there. Alright. That was smart. Alright, so I'm pretty sure... We'll move this so they can actually see me. I'm gonna move those out. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is where all of the mealies came from. This is my newest plant I got from that trade. And it was hanging directly above the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Like, and it touches, like, it's literally touching the ground right now. We will inspect and treat and work fast and then we will deep water it and then we'll look at the other ones i don't think it's as bad like devin said i don't think it's as bad as i thought it was gonna be but i'm glad that we found the source which is interesting because i've had this plant now for like that trade was like two months ago yeah and only just now we're seeing stuff so yeah and it is blooming so we're gonna be really careful because i don't want to break those all right so this is what we're working with so how I treat mealies, and it's always been effective in the past. Again, everyone does stuff differently. Um, but I like to use hydrogen peroxide. So I take my hydrogen peroxide. You find some? I think so. They make these little aerial roots that just knock off. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. So I like to take this hydrogen peroxide and I pour it in this cup. It's a pretty good amount. this and then you take q-tips and if you see a mealybug you can 
get the q-tip wet with the hydrogen peroxide and then if you put it on the mealybug it'll just like disintegrate this is hydrogen peroxide with water and dish soap in here not captain drax because i needed to use some hydrogen peroxide mix so we're gonna go through take a look see if we can find anything i don't think that there's gonna be as much as i'm thinking there is because even when i had them on my hoya Cronos compacta there wasn't that many so i think for this part i'm gonna time lapse it because this is kind of boring Okay, what are we taking cuttings of? Should we take it on the begonia box? We're taking cuttings now. Okay. Okay. So here's the begonia box. I kind of want to make this paludarium one big begonia box with other plants in it. So we're going to take, I think, a bunch of cuttings of this, and then we're just going to chuck them in there. We'll take a cutting of your thing first. Okay. Okay, you can have that. Thank you. Yeah. Do I can't believe I got, I literally got this when it was small enough to fit inside of a, like a ramekin. Really? Yeah, no, literally it's gotten massive. Like everything in here was so small except for this. this you have to do a Velosa. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and this guy's gonna try to fucking bloom on me. Shut the fuck up, stop doing that. I don't know, I guess we just take cuttings of everything. Yeah. I just can't decide with this one if I want to cut it at the stem or cut it with a leaf. Oh look, it's like so rooted. Ooh, that's what you like to see. Yeah. I think you have to do a chlor stick too. 100%. I can't believe the one in here that I cut too last time you were here. Yeah. Also, just always reminding you, this is so sharp. Mm -hmm. You ever cut yourself on it? But come look, the one in the back. Those roots are crazy. All right. So this is the one we're kind of looking at cutting is this. It Look at all those roots down there. Like that is wild. So... It would be a lot to cut, but it would be fine because it has all those roots and then it will grow back from the stem. Here, this monstera, he just like gets pushed that way. <laughs> Let's cut it down here and then we'll have it like completely regrow. And he'll be fine in there because he'll have like a ton of roots. There we go. Look at those. Wow. God, I love begonias. I do not understand <laughs> how people don't like them. I'm going to put... Yeah, that's good. That's right a good spot. Okay. Tuck him in. And you need a statement piece, you know, while everything yeah. is growing in. That's hot. That's hot. Oh. oh. I'm all over the place. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> also, Devin thinks this is an inflow. Right here. What do you guys think? I don't know anything. Yeah, I think that's an inflow, personally. Yeah, that's an inflow. A leaf wouldn't leave open. Alone, leave alone. I'm sorry. Um, Look at this mykins. I'm not going to take it out of here, but it's I just like really this guy cute. would be cute. Is it okay to cut? The emerald queen? Or the no, the, this one. Oh, the geo. Yeah, we should just move him in general because he's not doing that well in here. <laughs> that made such a funny noise. <laughs> Gotta be really careful. He's super rooted in here. All oh, that. dang. Yep. Begonia roots kind of go all over. All these tiny yeah. little fibers are all roots. begonia roots. Yeah. I can't decide. They like a lot of light sometimes, and these are diffused. And there's only the one. I'll cut one from the stem for you this time. Okay. So when I put stuff in here like this, I like to bend it like that and I make like a hairpin and then I push it in like this into the foam. All of this is foam that we have secured moss to. I didn't do this one with you, right? No. I did this one on stream, I think. So we'll get one here that's going to grow in and then this one is the top and then up here is more stem so i used to say on this channel by the way like not to touch begonias with your bare hands um it's still a good rule of thumb until you know what begonias are too delicate to touch and which ones aren't but it's not as like you know i was a baby two years ago who pretty much didn't know that much about plants at all mm -hmm. so and i still don't <laughs> but uh i definitely touched begonias and i got more confident to touch them when i went and visited anya botanicas you just know how, you have to know how to touch them i think yeah it's very true what type of pepperomia is that? This is Pepperomia tuberensis. It's a silvery. Yeah, I like it. Type of Pepperomia. This guy looks like he's happy in the back. Yeah, we're gonna leave him there. No, not the Peru. The oh, begonia. the glabra. This is begonia glabra. Yeah. Oh. And I think we might move this one because he put out this one and it kind of like it has three lobes. It got yeah, but it like was supposed to get way bigger and it never did. I say you should leave it. <sighs> but look how toliated it is. People ask me, how do you cut these? Because they're so knotted. Just go for it. And the it. answer is you literally just cut it. <laughs> Probably the craziest growth pattern on any planet. Yeah, the monster is cool. That's how you know, though, it's not a billy tie. 
if you see it and you're like, oh, what yeah. the fuck? That's the new Floby leaf. Ooh. That is so annoying. Because it's all green? Yeah, well, it's got a streak. It'll come back. We'll see. After I cut it, it has a aerial root right there. So I probably wouldn't cut stuff if it didn't have an aerial root because I'm kind of a nut about that kind of thing. Air layering is really important. But, oh, I love how that smells. Mm, like Such a good smell. smell, yeah. It's kind of like right on the cusp of the that's okay. thing, but that's okay because it doesn't Maybe matter. Maybe just let it air dry for a little as bit. As long as it's connected, it'll be fine. And I, that's good. And then he's small again. Ooh. And if you're going to bully me about liking small plants, go SMA. Go talk about it on Facebook, Yeah, losers. go talk about it on Facebook where I can't see it because I'm not <laughs> in any of those idiotic groups. The person who said that's going to like see this. Also, completely unrelated, but this is the Ilsamania I, I sold. By the way, just so you know, I sold this for $400 when it was just this kind of like dying leaf. Um, and then it put out this green leaf, completely green. And the next one was this one. This is what I mean by Ilsamaniae don't revert. There's a reason they don't call them variegated Ilsamaniae. They're just Ilsamaniae because they are a permanent variegation. It will never go away, even if you get shit like this. And this leaf was really green too. It only had a couple splotches before it got all faded on the side but it will always come back to that so you just have to grow them out and this guy got a super good deal because now if i had this i would sell it for like a k mm -hmm. and pay my rent a month in advance but he's also the guy i sold this to i also kind of sold it cheaper than normal because he's the guy who originally gave it to me in the first place i think it but, seems more light well you gave someone the top cut right yeah i did i gave it to sydney yeah it probably be, it, it would do better in yeah, the other one though those out. guys like a lot of light it is going to unnerve this entire situation because syngonium roots are kind of stupid look at oh that oh my god that's literally syngonium bro that's why it wasn't growing leaves <laughs> no i'm putting yeah, it at the bottom they bleach super easy I want it to grow too. I don't want it to. There's only one light in this one too, in comparison to all my others. Yeah, that'll be. Perfect. <gasps> oh my gosh, Devin, it's gonna be so cute. <laughs> That's great ground cover too. Shit. Progress checking. All right. <laughs> also, I think it is so funny that I literally have a glorious, and I was like, it's a Milano, and then you're like, isn't that a glorious? <laughs> This is a Mikan's, a variegated Mikan's node I've been working on growing in, but he was an unrooted node, so we're getting somewhere, slowly, very slowly, <laughs> extremely slowly. <laughs> he gave me a new leaf finally. And it rotted. And it rotted because it didn't get enough light. Yeah. Perfect. When I see stuff like that happen, I cut into it barely, and if there's no brown, I will leave it. And if there is brown, I will cut farther. Strawberry shake. <laughs> The tiniest one ever. It won't root for me in here, so I think it just needs more moisture. Look at how cute that is. Is it showing up? Yeah, you good. If you uh, zoom in like that, it makes oh. it easier to... Oh, shit. Yeah. He's so cool. He's on the leaf now. Bye, everyone. I'm yeah, Devin's gotta go. He has a busy things to do. So this is going to be a little bit harder to do now because we have to do it by ourselves and there's going to be no camera guy, but um, we're going to keep taking some cuttings and keep placing them. There's just a lot I could cut. Like I love tiny plants. I really do. And so I see something that has two leaves and I'm like, I could split it in half. Oh, it's just so difficult. Like there are so many leaves in here of stuff I could just cut. I don't know that anything in here is big enough to cut yet because it's all kind of growing out. I do want to move though a couple of the plants in here. I want to move this shake. Oh, I just accidentally dislodged that. That's okay. It has a root, so we'll just propagate it. Um, it's just not growing very well in there, so literally not growing in here. So we are going to take him out. And we're going to put him in here somewhere. There's a couple other plants that aren't doing so hot in here. I think the Velosa is finally chilling. Um, this is the Syngonium Milk Confetti. See those streaks? That's how you know it's a milk confetti. Normal confetti doesn't have those streaks. In the other one. Oh, it has a root that's grown all the way up there. Like, watch when I pull it down. That is so funny. And I need to water this, I think. Is he losing this leaf? Alocasia lose their leaves. That's the oldest current leaf, so. Snowdrift is doing fine, still. Everything down here is doing pretty good. We'll put this one in there. This is uh, something that one of my, we will put this uh, Burly Marks Fantasy. 
I think everything else in here is good. Also, look at the Lanami eye. Look at that. Yeah, I think everything else is kind of too small to take cuttings from right now. So I think every and everything else is growing in here. Like that's growing in. Whatever begonia that is is growing fine. Singonia panda is growing. Yeah, everything's growing. And this Burley Marks Fantasy is doing good too. It's like getting super sun stressed as well. It looks really cute. It's so big. It looks so good. I almost like don't want to cut it, but I want to put more plants in that box. Oh, and I took a cutting of this one too. I gave Devin some more cuttings when he left today. We usually give each other plants when we leave each other's house. We have these plants. I think I'm going to put in there as well. There's some begonia futoensis and some hoyas and then some variegated string of hearts uh, right on the side right here, as well as Hoya Bella Onica Bois. We'll take uh, a top cutting of this philodendron, small silver. Always next time. All right, check out those roots right there. Look at those roots. I think we're gonna take this whole Temu yuck out of here and put it in the big one. It's just not doing so hot in here. Also, I changed. Um, I know I never wear stuff like this in videos because it's like, oh, you know, people freak out when I don't wear, like when I wear shorts that are too short. So what would people think if I was just like in my sports bra? But you know what? This is what's comfortable for me right now. And if you don't like that, you don't have to watch. Or you can be mean about it in the comments to me. I don't care. I wanted to give you a little update. So I, you know, because of the meds that I've been taking, um, the specific medication that I am on is called Wellbutrin. It's the Wellbutrin uh, Slow Release 150. And it has, you guys, changed my life. I lived with such severe paranoia. Like, um, and the thing is my doctor thinks it's not necessarily paranoia, but like obsessive compulsive disorder. It's, it's really easy to confuse the two things. Um, my paranoia was all stemming from one thing that could never happen to me and has never happened to me before. Like for example, there are people who have OCD about fires happening. So they will unplug like all the things in their house and they're constantly scared of like, is this gonna cause a fire? Is this gonna cause a fire? And you might think, oh, the root cause of their fear is the, f is the, uh, is like dying by fire, but actually the root cause is their obsession with preventing something that would never happen because outlets don't just catch on fire in normal houses. My obsession, not obsession, but like, I mean, it honestly was, is since I was a little kid, I have been constantly terrified that if someone is going to kill me. My house has never been broken into. I've never been assaulted by someone I don't, well, okay. I've never been assaulted. <laughs> I've never been like physically like beat up. No one has literally ever broken into my house. I have no reason to have that fear at all. I would have to check the doors, all the doors, like five times before I went to bed uh, in different increments. And I would have to, I have like little alarms on every window and every door that are ridiculously loud. So if they get opened at all, it's like so loud my neighbors can hear. If I would wake up in the middle of the night, I would take it as a sign that I forgot to lock the door or someone was in the house. And so I would have to go check the house. I have been asking my dad to check our house since I was as young as I think 12 years old, you know, and he carried. And so he would like grab his G-U-N and then check the house. And was there ever anyone there? Never. Uh, but I just, it literally has been so debilitating. It has been hard to leave the house. It has been hard to function. Um, if my husband wanted to, he, cause you know, we're late night people. If he wanted to go to the grocery store at like 4 a.m., which is something that we do pretty often, I, if I had just gone to bed, I would have to wake up and go with him. I could not be alone. Chris works at home and helps me, me make videos is because I literally cannot be alone. I cannot function alone. If I'm alone, I will just like explode. Um, I don't know why, but basically this medication has completely changed my life. Literally, it was like two days ago, I took a shower for the first time, like by myself alone in the house in five years. You know, what's funny is like even talking about it right now, I'm worried that if I like talk about it, it's gonna like make it happen, like this will happen. But that's just like the old, the old thoughts that I don't have anymore. I don't really check. I don't obsessively check anything. Um, anyways, my point for telling you all of this is not to vent, you know, or just like talk about it. It is to tell you that 
the positives outweigh the negatives. Basically, I guess I can plant the plants while we talk about it. I just want to talk about this because people have like asked about it and I haven't really wanted to totally just talk a lot about it because I know some people don't have the emotional capacity uh, all the time to just like watch people talk about, you know, their mental health issues. And, and also it's kind of been like this big thing going on in my life. Like it's, it's why I haven't been able to post videos. Um, so I started taking Wellbutrin because I went to my, I had a regular checkup with my gynecologist because um, I have a reproductive disorder. I literally just had a panic attack in her office and kind of like lost my mind. Uh, I had like a nervous breakdown and I just like fell apart in her office. And because of that, you know, because she is a doctor, um, she had to do a psych eval on me and make sure that like everything was fine, which it wasn't. She extended our appointment by about an hour. And I felt really bad because I know that that meant that someone else had to have their appointment pushed off or filled by another doctor or just outright canceled. Um, but she was an amazing doctor and she literally saw someone who, I don't know, I'm gonna cry talking about this. She saw someone who literally was like at the edge of their string. And instead of prioritizing her other patients or trying to get me out, like, and Chris was there too, because Chris has to go with me everywhere, because if he doesn't, I fall apart. It's just so, like, I feel so weak to say, but, like, that was, that's how my whole life has been. Like, I cannot be alone. I literally would hang out with people who I did not like for the fear of ever being alone. And there were other things too. Sometimes I would see things um, that weren't there, but they weren't hallucinations. They were just, you get so scared that there's something there all the time that sometimes your brain thinks that it sees something and it's not a hallucination because you can't, I've had hallucinations before from medications, uh, from like, I used to have a kidney stone issue growing up. So I had a lot of hospital visits, have very realistic hallucinations that I literally cannot tell are not real and they're not scary. I know that hallucinating sounds scary, but it would literally be like the one that I remember and it was three days of this and I don't remember it because it was after a surgery. The biggest one that I remember was I was talking to my mom in my hospital bed. I was petting my dog and it, like my dog was literally there, like literally on top of me and I could feel it. And like, it was my dog and I was just like petting it, you know, and like holding it and it was warm. And then my mom was like, Ashley, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm petting Sadie. And we were in Idaho and our dog was in Oregon. And then I looked down and my dog was gone. There was another one that I remember, the only other one I remember, which is where I was talking to my mom and she got up and like left my hospital room. And so like, as she's leaving, I'm like talking to her uh, and then I'm talking this way. And then all of a sudden she's like, Ashley. And I look back and she's still there. Does that make sense? So I've, I've experienced real hallucinations before and you literally can't tell that they're happening. It's so weird. But uh, yeah, basically I'm like getting, I'm getting evaluated for a bunch of different stuff. Because of how bad my anxiety was, I started becoming delusional. The worst it was, was last year. Until this year, the worst it was, was last year. And it was, the two, the two most notable ones um, were, it was when I was living alone in my other apartment. Well, Chris technically lived there, but like not really. I got a knock on my door I wasn't expecting. And I know I'm generally hyperbolic on this channel and whatever, but I got a knock on my door I was not expecting. I didn't have a package that needed to be delivered. And I, instead of thinking, oh, it's a neighbor, or oh, the neighbor kids need something, or, it's a package or whatever. My thought was, all right, someone's here to kill me. And I'm not even kidding. That's literally what my thought was. And so I hid for an hour in my own apartment that was locked. I literally hid on the floor crying because I knew someone was there to kill me. And it sounds so bad to talk about it <laughs> because these things don't happen to everyone. You think everyone experiences these things, but they don't. And then after about an hour, of just sitting there scared to move, scared to breathe, scared to do anything for the fear that I was going to die. Uh, I decided to try to see who was out there. Um, Cause my fear, right, was that they were trying to get me to open the door so that I would open the door. And then when I would peek out around the corner, they would be standing there. Cause we had a, we had a fish eye, right? But uh, you can easily hide from those. Why would you? I don't know. Um, and so I peeked out the door and there was no one there. And it took me another 30 minutes to get the courage to open the door. And when I opened the door, it was a surprise package from my mom who sent me chocolate. And that was when I realized I had a problem. I had a completely unnatural reaction to someone just knocking on my door. I literally hid and I grabbed like a knife. I like, I'm not kidding. I thought I was going to die from someone knocking on my door from my mom delivering me a surprise package of chocolate. The next week, my phone broke 
and I had stayed up all night. Something that affects my anxiety worse than other things is not sleeping. Uh, most of my mental breakdowns happen when I haven't slept for 24 hours uh, and every time that I'm like Oh, I just I don't I won't sleep. I won't have that happen this time. Um, it always does. Chris and I watched the entire series of The Witcher uh, the TV show and Then my phone broke like my phone turned off and I was like, oh, I'll just charge it later So I tried to charge it and for an hour it wouldn't turn back on and the time came that Chris needed to go to work So I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just text from my MacBook like that's how I can get a hold of people. I'll be okay being alone um, because I had been alone all the time. But what I used to do was that if I had to be home alone, I would just leave the house so that I could be out, not home alone, that I can be in public so that if for some reason I needed help from someone, I could get help from a stranger or something. Like I just felt safer in public than I did in my own house. This is so sad to talk about, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> my phone still wasn't turning on. And what happened next was, like one of the most traumatic things to ever happen, honestly, in my life. And I know that sa this sounds like melodramatic, but I can't explain to you guys. Like when you literally have a panic disorder, the smallest things make you feel like you are, you are going to die. Like it's not a question of if this could happen to me. It's not like, oh, what if thoughts? It's like, this is going to happen to me and I have to be prepared for it because if I ever let my guard down, that's when it's gonna happen. I don't know if that makes sense, but like that's how it was in my head. And uh, Chris left and I was home alone and it took about 15 minutes for me to completely lose my mind uh, because I realized that my MacBook couldn't send photo, send text to anyone if my phone wasn't on. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's still like that, but it could not because my MacBook didn't have cellular, my phone did and it would basically pair to my phone and then text from my laptop instead of my phone. Uh, and so I quickly realized I could not get a hold of anyone. And at the time I had a lot of different health issues, a lot of really severe different health issues. Like I would have to go to the hospital um, every couple months for a kidney stone. Um, and what if I couldn't call 911? And that was the first thought. And then it just spiraled and I, had the most insane panic attack I've ever had in my life. I literally just started screaming in my own apartment and then I started crying and my cat was scared of me. Um, in the past, I've always had pets that like if I had a panic attack, which would happen a lot, my pets would be there for me. Uh, but Raven was terrified of me, like literally terrified. And that was like the hardest part, honestly, is I realized like, oh my God, I'm scaring my cat. I started crying. I started like kind of scratching in my arms. I was panicking. I was like scream crying in my house. Started to, I almost passed out. I literally started to lose my vision. I was hyperventilating. I was going to pass out. And I had to run to my neighbor's house. I had never met them before. And I literally was like, I'm going to pass out. I'm having a panic attack. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, but I, if I pass out, I don't want to pass out alone. And they were extremely helpful. They ended up being a nurse. So they helped me out a lot. And they called my husband for me. And Chris called in and said that his wife was having an emergency and he had to leave work. And so he came home because I didn't have a phone to call someone in case I needed help, which is hilarious because the fear of needing help made, made me actually have something that needed me to get help. Those are like the two most notable ones. Uh, and then over time, it just kind of got worse. It started to evolve to the point where I could no longer process my feelings. And so I would take my feelings out on myself, if you understand what I'm saying. All of that culminated in my doctor's office over three weeks ago, because I've been taking the medications now for 32 days. Um, and the medication has completely changed my life. I can not only be home alone. I used to have friends come over if I, if I was home alone and I needed to take a shower, I would have my friends literally drive to my house, like one of them and be in the house with me uh, so that I wouldn't be alone. One time when Chris was on a trip and I had to sleep over one night, one night alone in this house, I thought I heard something and I literally called my brother-in-law at four in the morning because I was convinced, you guys, convinced that there was someone who was going to break into my house. He came over and he stayed and there was nothing wrong and nothing happened and nothing has ever happened. You know, people always joke about being delusional and not being able to like, like oh, you're delusional, like you're being delusional. But I actually had delusions, like real delusions that were not based in truth at all. And you could say, oh, well, you can just know that like, you just need to stop being scared. Like, oh, five head, just don't. <laughs> Like, no, it's not how it works because you literally can't tell the difference between what is real 
like what is a real thing to be afraid of and what is completely not real. And my reason, uh, she thought that maybe, you know, it's OCD, which I don't have a diagnosis. I don't have a diagnosis yet. Um, but they're considering a lot of different things. So the biggest one is OCD uh, because I have this obsession with this fear. Uh, it's, it's, what do they call it? It's a, it's a subconscious obsession with this one specific thing. And this one specific thing causes all of my anxiety, which is the fear of someone murdering me. So <laughs> uh, the medication I am on has made it so that I literally do not have that problem anymore at all. I don't have those feelings at all anymore, at all. I go to sleep and I sleep and then I wake up and I'm happy and I'm happy throughout the day. Like I can't remember, you guys, I literally cannot remember the last time I was happy. <laughs> I might cry. <laughs> um, it's not like sad crying, it's like relief. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't wanna cry. I just wanted to like talk to you guys and like give you a life update about like what's been going on um, and why I haven't been making content and why I keep taking so much time off. I don't know, I don't know what I don't wanna do. I just don't want you guys to get the wrong idea and think, oh, she's exploiting mental illness reviews, which is not at all what I'm doing. I'm, I just I just wanna communicate with you, you know? I literally just wanted this to be like a fun video where like I updated you guys on stuff, but I feel like no one talks about this. I didn't even ever consider talking about it and I kind of feel like it's important in case any of you guys are experiencing this to know that like, medications actually can help you because you're sick um your brain is not functioning properly and just like if you had a cold and you would take like mucinex so you can breathe uh you can take medicine for your brain the relief was almost immediate within four days i felt a lot better but that scared me so i stopped taking it for three days after that and that was my mistake in some people in less than one percent of cases you can become pretty instantly attached to wellbutrin uh, or other mental drugs that specifically affect how your brain processes things and was unfortunately my situation i stopped taking it and then almost immediately after within a couple hours i got a cold like a whole the whole nine yards the whole cold i took three COVID tests they were all negative um, I took a flu test. It was negative. I had runny nose. I had a fever. I had like literally I had a cold you guys After the cold happened. I started having a hard time going to the bathroom I went to the urologist and I had like I literally could not pee you guys Like I literally could not pee at all and I was having massive pain uh, And so like kidney stone I had a kidney stone disorder my whole life um, and so my urologist got me in same day that I had concerns because they wanted to make sure, you know, if I needed surgery or something, they could just do it so I could be done. And I went there and they did all the tests and they could not find a stone because they couldn't do anything. They just sent me home, which is fine because I don't know what else they're supposed to do if they can't fix it. Like they, like I can't just have them operate on me, you know? So, um, <laughs> and I just was thinking, I was like, wow, there's like a lot going on right now. I'm like sick and I feel like I'm having a kidney stone. And then... That that's like the end of the second night. Um, going into day three was when I started to get, and I started having tremors, which I've never had before in my entire life. It almost felt like ticks. People who have Tourette's say that their ticks feel like. I've had fr multiple friends who've had Tourette's. They have described it to me is it feels good to do, and it feels like something you have to do, and it feels like it's already going to happen and then your body just does it uh, and it feels good when you do it and it's involuntary. Mine started small. My legs were constantly twitching um, like all the time. Then it kind of moved into my shoulder and then it was in my hands and as the day progressed it got more and more violent. Went to sleep feeling like the shakiness and I really just thought it kind of feels like when you drink a lot of uh, caffeine and you just kind of are you know like like wired I guess is the only way to explain it. What happened after that <laughs> was that I woke up at four in the morning from a nightmare because my face in my nightmare was contorting above all my control. My face was just, I mean like so distorted, horror movie levels of distortion in my face. And I woke up terrified to realize that that was happening to me in real life. It was horrible. It's like waking up from a nightmare only to realize that it's not a nightmare, it's real and it's happening to you right now. I could not control my face at all. My face, it was crazy too because it was the first time I'd been able to sleep in days. I had not been able to sleep for the 
last three days that all this had been going on. I remember having this thought like, man, that's too bad I woke up because I was even having like a good sleep. And then I kind of realized like my face like was just moving. And I, when I tried to fall back asleep, all of a sudden um, my face just started doing things like this, like that, like it was just moving and I wasn't controlling it. And it was just like, like really weird faces. And I know that might like look silly, but it was horrifying. I couldn't control my legs. They would just kick. Uh, my eyes would just move. Like I would literally be like sitting here and, and things would just like move and my eyes would jerk and it would hurt. Uh, but it wasn't brain zaps. And it got to the point where I panicked and I called a doc, like, you know, the late night helpline. And I was like, do I need to go to the ER? Like, I don't know what's going on. And Chris was like, Ashley, it's okay. Like your body twitches, like that's normal. And I was like, no, I was like, I can't explain this to you. Like the thing was a lot of the movement was internal. Like I could feel my muscles jerking and you could look at my arm and you could see it would be twitching, like the muscles would be contracting, almost like when you're at the chiropractor and they stick you with those pads and then they run electricity through you and it like makes your muscles tighten and then release and then tighten and release. That's what it was. You could literally see it. Like my face was just twitching. Everything was twitching. It was like someone was running electrical currents through me, except that it got to the point where it was, I could not control it. And I would be sitting there like, like tweaking, like literally tweaking out. Like I, was, like I had Tourette's and they were like ticks. I can't explain it. If you haven't experienced it, it is bizarre. And then I tried to go back to sleep and my husband, I had this thought, um, I laid there for 30 minutes and I, I could not, I was so scared. I had to hold my face. I had to hold my face like this because if I didn't hold it like this, I couldn't control it. This was the only way I could keep my face from like tweaking out. But it also wasn't just my face. Like while I'm holding that, my fingers are like involuntarily curling in and everything was like twitching. It was horrifying. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me because I didn't know why it was happening. And I literally said to Chris, I was like, why is why are all these things happening to me right now? Like what is going on? Like it's the last three days it's been, I have a cold and then I'm having a kidney stone and now I'm having tremors. Like what is going on? I laid there and I was like, oh my God. Am I having drug withdrawal? Because I've experienced drug withdrawal before. That's why I've never done drugs and why I'm never going to do them again because the next three months of my life were spent detoxing from morphine and not even normal morphine, Dilaudid morphine, which is synthetic, man-made, and five times stronger than morphine. It is not a substance that occurs naturally. So I knew what drug withdrawal was because I lived it. I was literally on the same forums as people who were recovering from their bike addiction for 10 years. It was horrifying because it wasn't even my choice. It wasn't even my fault. I just did what a doctor told me to do. I sat there and I thought, why is all this happening? Oh my fucking God, am I going through drug withdrawal? I got up, I said that out loud while Chris was with me. He was literally holding me because I couldn't stop shaking. I was like, I was literally shaking like crazy. I got out of bed and I ran to the kitchen. You're not supposed to cut these pills in half. I knew that that's what it said, but I knew that when my grandma gave me the medication, she cut it in half and I just thought, oh, it's the same thing. When you cut a slow release pill in half, it makes it instant. You get all of the feeling all at once and it does not last as long as it would if you had to have it slow release throughout the day. I cut a pill in half and I just swallowed it. Because I cut it in half, like I said, it made the whole, whatever half, it was not exact. I used a butter knife to cut it in half. It made all of that instant, literally instant. And within an hour, most of my hard tremors had subsided. They were still really intense. The biggest, the worst one was my eyes. I would literally be like, like my, I can't even do it because again, it was involuntary. It was just something my brain did to my eyes, but my eyes would be here and then they would just like, like they would jerk hard to the right where they would jerk down like it hurt again it wasn't the brain zaps it was completely different and i couldn't control my eye movement i would literally be trying to play video games like while well, i'm recovering from this and i couldn't control my eyes and so i would miss things or i wouldn't move or i'd get hit by a boss or something because i would look away and i couldn't look back until my eyes would let me and it was awful. Legs wouldn't stop moving. My legs, my whole body tremors kind of subsided and it was mostly in my legs at a point. It moved down to my calves. Occasionally it would be up in my thighs, uh, but the thigh ones were more severe. It would be like my whole muscle contracting um, and kind of kicking. But the eyes are the part that took the longest to go away. It was the one, sometimes I still get them. It's been a month and it will happen every, like I think it happened once to me this week. Your eyes, they just kind of move. This medicine changed how my brain worked and then I immediately stopped taking it, which you're not supposed to do. You are not. I do, I do not know how to stress this enough to you guys. If you are prescribed a medication for your brain that changes how your brain works and you stop taking it 
without doctor guidance, you can hurt yourself. Literally hurt yourself. There are certain ways to stop taking certain medications. I thankfully don't have any lasting issues. And also less than 0.1% of people deal with this. This does not happen to normal people. After three days of taking Wellbutrin, you are not supposed to experience what I experienced, but I did. And it happens to a couple people on Reddit who I was talking to. I literally joined so many different Reddit groups about Wellbutrin and the consensus is that it can happen, but it's extremely rare uh, but some people experience dependency after three to six days but it's an extremely small amount of people that was the first week i stopped posting because i could not film i couldn't function i could hardly eat i couldn't sleep i couldn't even play games properly because of my eye issue then after being on meds again for four days I started to feel better again in every way, in every sense of the word. Five days, I started to feel happy for the first time in years. Not situational happiness, where it's like, oh, I'm getting married, this is happy. I'm talking like, you're just happy to be alive. You're just excited to be here. You're, you're just excited to like wake up and do stuff. I hadn't felt that in years, if ever, uh, cause I've always been like this. I. I don't even know, like, I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to explain it. But after a week, I mean, my tremors had almost completely gone away. I still felt a little weird, but um, aside from the tremors, all of my issues went away, all of them. My anxiety, my compulsivity, my like depression, my, my stress, um, everything just completely went away. During this time, I was also talking to my parents because I wasn't sure how long the effects of the withdrawal would last. I obviously am the sole provider for my husband and I, and my parents said, you know, don't worry about it. Like we will, we will take care of you. You just need to get better so that, you know, you can keep living. <laughs> the most important thing is for you to get better. So once my parents said that if something were to happen where they needed to help us with any funds, um, that completely lifted my stress and is mostly the reason why there has been so few videos because I have the ability to just recover because what happened to me over the last month of those three days, I had nervous breakdown after nervous breakdown after nervous breakdown until the meds kicked back in and it was about five days of feeling like I was going to die. I don't have any anxiety, none. I don't have any fears. If I get anxious about something, it is something I'm excited for, which it's like this gut feeling in your stomach I can't explain. It's almost like lower down in your stomach, like right up below your chest and above your intestines. And I get excited about stuff and it makes me feel anxious, but it's not anxious. It's not scared, it's like anticipation. It's completely different. It has revolutionized my life. It has changed however. Um, you should never take any medication that you don't need. In my opinion, if you do not need it, you should not take it because all medications can change how your body works and functions. As I've talked about on this channel before, I struggled with an eating disorder. I still kind of do. When you have one, it never goes away. Well, Butrin is not, I cannot stress this enough, it is not a medication you should be on if you have a restrictive eating disorder specifically. The seizure threshold for people with Wellbutrin, almost completely zero if you have no eating disorder. If you have had a history of an eating disorder, it's about 0.001%. And if you currently are practicing a restrictive eating disorder and you are not getting the food and nutrients that you need, the seizure th threshold is a little above 4%, which is almost 400% higher than if you had a history of it uh, and no longer practice. Almost like a million, it's 100, like I don't even know how to explain the math, but like if you are restricting, you absolutely should not be taking Wellbutrin and people who do restrict seek out Wellbutrin because it is known for eliminating your appetite. One of the, in, they're called like in contingencies or something, in contradictions, in contradictionations. It means like something that can happen because of the medication. Um, I read the actual doctor's manual that discusses those things. Um, like for example, Wellbutrin can cause anorexia in people who didn't even have an eating disorder before. So if you are anorexic and you are taking Wellbutrin, it is a horrible mix. I have a history of anorexia. My doctor actually tried to unprescribe it for me originally. She prescribed it and then after I had taken it a couple hours later, she was like, hey, 
you shouldn't be on this medication because of your history. And I didn't catch that, I'm sorry, and we'll find you different med. And I said, well, is it okay if I just take it until I can meet with my psychiatrist in a week? Because I had my appointment with the psychiatrist in I think 10 days. And she was like, as long as you are eating food, you are eating enough food, you should be fine. But again, it is absolutely not recommended for you, specifically you. The interesting thing is that right when she had actually prescribed it, I was kind of starting to restrict again for the first time in years because my anxiety was at an all time high and you just can't control it when it happens. I said, as long as I'm eating, I'm fine. And she said, yes. And so I, we immediately went and got a bunch of food. Like I went and ate a ton of food and I have been trying to make sure that I'm eating enough. And the reason specifically that I walked you through all of this and told you through like all of this, when I started posting videos again about, I think it was eight day, eight or nine days ago, um, that was when I started to almost completely lose my appetite, which has never happened to me before. I am someone who really likes to eat. I will literally like, if I do anything with my friends, it's getting food. Um, and my friends have always said to me that like, I never eat more than when I'm with you. Like we just eat. The last week has been really hard because for the first time ever, sometimes I eat and it makes me just want to puke. And it is not because my eating disorder that I've had a history with, it is because of the medication. The medication itself, just makes you lose your appetite, which is why people who are anorexic and know like and, and practice it, like there are people who do practice it on purpose. I have met them and it is so triggering to be around them. <laughs> you should not be on medications unless you need them because of things like this. And the last week, what I have been dealing with uh, is the adjustment around the fact that it is really hard for me to eat food. I can pretty much only eat bland foods. It can't have almost any flavor, which is interesting because I used to put hot sauce on literally anything that I could. Uh, and now I can't do that uh, because it makes me want to puke. <laughs> um, I've taken pregnancy tests. Your girl's not pregnant, uh, which isn't a surprise because I never am. <laughs> if I could stop taking this medication because of what it's doing to my appetite, I would. However, this medication has changed my life. I am not the same person I was before I went on this medication. My husband also hates medication. He's always like, no, you shouldn't take something that you should rely on, like, because that can be a problem later down the line. And you don't want to ever have to worry about getting off something um, if you, like, needed to get off of it. And, you know, he's also seen what other medications have done to me in the past because I've had to have surgeries and it's never good. You know, Medi medication's never good if you don't need it. The pros have to outweigh the cons. And in my situation, the pros have changed my life. I am not being hyperbolic. I literally do not have an anxiety disorder anymore on this medication. I've been on it for 32 days and it has completely changed my life. Christopher can go to the store and I'm happy to stay home. I don't even want to leave. And it's not because of fear. It's just because I'm busy. I'm doing stuff. I don't want to leave. I can take showers by myself at home, which I haven't been able to do in years. You guys, years. I can be alone by myself comfortably for the first time in years. I go to bed without checking to see like if the doors are like turned, like if the alarms are on. And I always make sure, and Christopher, you know, he checks too, cause that's just something you should do. But I'm not waking up in the middle of the night and taking the fact that I woke up as a sign from God that that means there's someone in my house and I have to check my house. It would be so awful for Chris because I would get up three to four times in the middle of the night to check our house. Was there ever anyone there? No, never once. And now I go to sleep and I stay asleep and I don't have nightmares every night. I used to have nightmares every single night. Fear, I am completely capable of doing things by myself. I am more independent. I am just a completely different person. The medication also used to, it makes me sleepy. Uh, the thing with ADHD is that stimulants make you sleepy. That's why they give Adderall to people with ADHD to help. Albutrin is a stimulant. It's also used off label to treat ADHD. That was another reason I chose it over Lexapro because Lexapro is like literally worshiped by the people who take it because that's amazing. I understand now how much medication can change your life. I didn't want to take an SSRI in case I had bipolar because I do experience pretty severe mania sometimes. It was either 100 or zero. <laughs> and so if I by chance had bipolar, I did not want to be in on an SSRI. And also Wellbutrin is used off label to treat ADHD, also used off label to treat anxiety. Wellbutrin, however, is an antidepressant, but it works in a different way where it changes how your body uh, controls dopamine instead of controlling certain sensory inhibitors like SSRIs. So it basically makes dopamine last longer in your body and your system, if I understand it correctly. Uh, and for some people who have ADHD, it can mellow you out, bring down your anxiety and just like help you. I literally, you guys, I'll just be like sitting here and I'll be like, wow, life is so good. I 
didn't understand the feelings of happiness at first because I was confusing them with euphoria. I was literally having these moments where I thought I was euphoric, which usually is a sign of mania when I'm experiencing mania myself, but it wasn't euphoria because I'm still having those moments and it's actually just called happiness. It's actually just called being happy, <laughs> which I haven't experienced in years. So I just wanted to talk to you about that and tell you about what's going good with it. This last week has been hard, like I said, because I have had the hardest time eating this week. And because I know that I have a history of anorexia, I do not want to relapse. I absolutely do not want to relapse because I do not want to die. Uh, anorexia is one of the most deadly mental illnesses next to depression. Actually, I think it has a higher death rate than depression. You're pretty much cutting 30 years or more off your life. Uh, and I already practiced it for like two years, not practiced like, oh, it's a religion. But you know, I didn't realize it. I was like 16 and I had an abusive friend. Yeah, it's just not good. And I don't want to fall back into it. I want to be healthy. I want to live a long life. I want to have kids. I want to live a long time. <laughs> and the plants, I don't know. I just want to live. I'm kind of happy right now. I'm kind of chill. Uh, I used to have to put on a fake smile a lot when I would film videos because I would literally be in the middle of a depressive episode and I wouldn't be able to focus. And I was just sad and crying. There's so many times I filmed videos after crying you guys you have no idea you would never know too like you would never know but i did because it was my job and this week i have been able to eat i had to start setting alarms because i just don't feel the hunger cues until i'm starving and i know that that doesn't make sense but like by the time i feel a hunger cue i'm already nauseous so i have had to work eating into my schedule and making it a scheduled event after devin left i started to feel hungry i decided to keep trying to film but then I was like, no, like I am feeling the cue. That means it's time to eat. Even though I don't want to, even though I feel sick, um, I need to eat. So I stopped filming, I ate. I ate a sandwich and it took me 45 minutes to eat the sandwich. Not because of anorexia, but because of the fact that this medication makes me feel sick when I eat food. So, <laughs> um, that's kind of what sparked me to decide, you know, I want to talk about this because I want to be able to talk about these things on my channel. A lot of you guys uh, that watch me are neurodivergent or you're dealing with, you know, depression, anxiety, you have autism, you have ADHD, you have bipolar, you have OCD or something. And that's a lot of you guys who watch me. I just want to be open with you too and tell you that I am going through a really hard time right now. A really hard time i'm having to relearn how to eat um i can't eat a lot but i'm really excited to tell you that for the last two days i have eaten three times a day yesterday i ate at my family's no i think i only ate twice yesterday but that was good because the day before i ate three times um and they're small you know they're like small meals and then i woke up and we had father's day brunch at you know with christopher's family and uh i ate and the food tasted good and I didn't feel nauseous until after I ate. And then I felt hungry in the evening. I kind of pushed off eating for a while because I didn't want to deal with it. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat food. And I started to eat and it tasted good, which is good because that's the first time that's happened in a week. We've even tried things like ordering pizza or like, I don't know, we've tried so much. Like we've tried eating my comfort foods, it doesn't work. Like it's just, it's completely different. Everything just makes me nauseous. And the one thing that makes me feel full when I'm done eating it, even though it makes me sick when I eat it, is like a plain ham sandwich. Like six slices of deli ham in between sourdough bread. I'm just really proud of myself because even though it was hard, I like stopped, I stopped filming instead of pushing through and getting upset at myself later because I get hungry and then I'm like, why did I wait so long? I stopped and I ate food. And I'm really proud of that. I want to be okay. I want to be better. I want to be healthy. I want to be able to make these videos every day. That was like the best time of my life before I developed all this, before everything got hard back in 2020. At the, the January to May of 2020 was like the last time I felt happy. And I am having to relearn my relationship with food. Uh, food is now something I mostly eat because I have to eat it because it is something I need so that I don't get sick and die. And I don't want to redevelop an eating disorder, you know? But that is why I was posting again and then I stopped posting because to be honest, getting the eating thing under control has been ridiculously hard. 
it's really hard to function and like try to work when you're so tired because you haven't eaten and you're nauseous because you haven't eaten and you know that what's gonna fix it is eating but that sounds awful because that means you have to eat and you are nauseous it's kind of like this weird cycle today i woke up for the first time and i wasn't nauseous and then i started to feel hungry when devin left and instead of letting myself get nauseous and like putting off the eating because i was dreading it because i didn't want to feel sick i just sat down and ate a sandwich and it did take me 45 minutes to eat. I'm just proud of myself because I'm trying to do things that are going to help me. Like I put this together and I'll give you a tour of it when it's done. Like it's kind of done. I have to like get it humid and stuff, but I wanted to do something that makes me, that used to make me happy. Right now things don't exactly make me very happy. I'm just proud of myself, you guys. And I wanted to talk about it because I'm proud of myself. I feel more confident in myself. I'm happy with myself. I would have never liked filmed a video in my bra before because I'm terrified of what people are gonna think about me, but this is what I'm comfortable in wearing right now and I'm going to wear it. And if you don't like my body, that's okay. It's not for you. It's not your body, it's my body. I don't know, I'm just a lot healthier and I just wanted to tell you guys that. Um, and I didn't wanna tell you while it was happening because a lot of you guys were scared for me, to be honest. Uh, I got messages pretty much every day when I was just kind of off the grid of people saying, you haven't posted in three weeks. I am genuinely worried about you as a human being. If you need help, I can help you. Here is my number, here is this, like, let me help you. Uh, because everyone knows I post all the time, and so if I don't post, that's completely unusual behavior. When I start to go through something, because I will stop posting photos of myself. I will post photos of other things that don't include me. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of you guys know me pretty well, which is actually kind of wild, because you, people always say like, oh, you don't actually know the people on the internet, but a lot of you guys actually know me really, really, really well. And it's probably because I'm so open on here. I just wanted to take some time and talk to you about this because this has been the last month of my life. I've never been medicated before for anything and it is the best decision I have ever made in my life, ever. And I didn't make it lightly. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I wanted to tell you guys, I wanted to be open with you about it. And I'm sorry if this was a lot and you didn't want to hear about it. Um, and maybe, it, I don't know, I hope you're okay. I did put a trigger warning at the beginning of this video and then also at the beginning of the section before I started talking about this stuff, but I wanted to let you guys know that I am doing really good. <sighs> Do more plant stuff, finally. I missed plant stuff a lot. I have so many emails from Zimph, from Net like Netpot, like, I don't know, these people who I had planned, like Soltech, I have this guy, Sol poor Josh or Jake, I can't remember one of it. it's one of those names. He's been sitting in my inbox for a month now and I haven't emailed him back because I just, I couldn't even bring myself to open my email. It's like, how am I supposed to open my email and work if I can't even eat food? And if you've been worried about me, you honestly had a reason to be, but now you don't. And I'm doing really amazing and I am genuinely happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I am happy from the second I wake up to the second I go to bed and I don't have nightmares and I feel like a person I feel like if this is how people just walk around feeling all the time, that I wish I had been on meds since I was like a kid. I just, I feel like I could have done, I've done a lot, but I feel like I could have done a lot more that I would have been happy with. And I also specifically want to thank my head moderator of my Discord, Sarah, who uh, goes by they, them, just in case you're gonna talk about them in the comments, uh, they, them. They were with me through all of it. Uh, Sarah was with me from the second I started kind of taking the meds again, like started taking them for the first time through when I stopped taking them, then taking them again and through the next few weeks and still through today. Uh, Sarah and I have pretty much been talking every single day, all day long, and they have been there for me through the panic attacks, through feeling like I am literally going to die, through everything, um, and they have <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to cry. <laughs> I just have feelings. I have feelings now. I didn't before. I was like numb and now I have feelings. I don't know. I'm just so grateful to have a friend. Like, first of all, obviously every single person goes through their own things um, and feels a lot of different things. And Sarah, you know, has their own issues that they deal with um, on a daily basis, just like everyone else. The fact that they are able to be there for me when I was like a record player, I'd be like, wow, it's so crazy. This medicine makes you feel so good. And it was like all I would talk about. And then when I was having a problem, like I would constantly be scared and talking about it. I mean, like literally we're talking, this person was there for me 24 seven through the worst of it and now into the best of it, which is incredibly selfless. So selfless um, to do for another person because the emotional capacity you have to have 
to do that for someone who is struggling to just keep living. I just wanted to like, I just care a lot about this, I'm sorry. I'm really not trying to cry and be like, oh, thumbnail. <laughs> I'm not, and this isn't gonna be the thumbnail. Um, or maybe it is, I don't know, these are real emotions. I feel like I, I feel like I get gaslit into not being able to like express myself um, openly. Oh my God, is there dirt in my eye? I am so eternally grateful because throughout all of this, I pretty much effectively cut off my real life friends. And I texted them in December when I started to go through this stuff. It was actually kind of in November, the end of November going into December, that things got really bad. And I texted them and I said, hey, I am not going to be talking to you for a while. It has nothing to do with you. I literally am not surviving. <laughs> and I just cannot feel the social pressure to see anyone at all in any capacity and I'm sorry and I understand if you don't want to be friends with me after this um, but I'm going through this and I'm sorry that I won't be talking to you for probably a really long time. It is really nice to have obviously the support of your husband. Christopher has been there through me through thick and thin. Having a friend depend on you who doesn't have to be there for you because they have no tie to you through literally like the worst month of your life when you've cut off like everyone else in your life because you just can't you just can't you can't see people you just like i just wanted to like thank them in this video very clearly because i <laughs> i'm really sorry i'm not trying to cry i don't think i could have done it without them <sighs> okay so thank you <laughs> and i'm sorry for crying i'm not trying to be dramatic i just swear to god I'll probably leave this in, I'm not sure. I don't want people to talk about me in a negative way, but like this is just true and it's real. And um, I don't wanna not talk about it anymore because this shit is really real. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about it, even though I knew it would make me cry. I literally am a completely different person. <laughs> everything is gone and I am happy and I just wanted to tell you guys because you've kind of been there watching me kind of go through it and um yeah so let me show you the plants <laughs> I'm gonna get a drink of water and then I'm gonna show you the plants uh and we're gonna miss it and then that will be it for this really long video let me show you the plants in here so here are the plants we have begonia species temuyak he's in here because he is sad uh he doesn't like his other environments philodendron adipoensi this baby uh philodendron milano chrysum hoya uh hoya bella annica bois a tiny strawberry shake uh this is begonia futoensis we have a lot of different begonia sarawaks in here this one is uh, philodendron patricia this is peperomia tuberensis uh, this is Begonia Johawii. This is another baby strawberry shake. This is a Philodendron Small Silver, a Hoya Matilde, another Sarawak, another Sarawak right there. The bigger shake with the baby. Here is the Begonia Chlorosticta. I know it looks really sad and scary, you guys, but he will be fine. I literally put this in here. I cut it uh, and then I left this open for an hour because I had to go eat. And, um, this happens, the plants will kind of get sad when you cut them and then it'll keep them humid. But it will perk up because it has a ton of roots. And then down here, we have a bigger Begonia futoensis um, that I've been rooting. And then Burley Marks variegata, another Burley Marks variegata right there. Uh, Philodendron dairy horn, Syngonia mojito, and then a Monstera spa Peru variegata in the bottom, so. And that will grow in, but this looks pretty empty right now, right? It looks like this, but that is what that guy looked like before I had him all planted and he grew in. So um, it's going to look really good. Same thing with that one. That one's still growing in, but it looks better than it did when I first planted it. This video was a lot. I wasn't expecting to film it until I sat down uh, and I just wanted to talk with you. We haven't talked in a while without me wearing a mask. For the last couple of times that I filmed videos, um, actually all the last couple of times I filmed videos, I have not been myself. Um, I have been a completely different person. I don't even, I didn't even recognize myself, to be honest. Um, she had to exist so that I could continue to work, but she was not me. And um, I feel like you guys could kind of tell. I am back again. 
I am happy. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot more videos like for real this time because I'm healthy and happy and I'm having a good time. I am happy with life. I know this video was a lot, but I wanted to have a honest conversation with you about what's going on because I like to be open with you on my channel. I don't like to just be a creator who just kind of exists in a vacuum. I'm a person and I am getting better. So yes, thank you for watching this video. Um, it feels weird to ask you to like, like and subscribe because this was kind of a talk. So I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do have a discord if you want to join it. I haven't been as active there in the last month because I've literally been trying to just live. Um, but I am going to start being active again because I am, I'm doing really good. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of sponsors so that we can kind of catch up on our income. And uh, I'm also probably going to be selling some plants here and there as well. I just want to be completely open and frank with you about that. Um, so if you see a lot of sponsors, please don't like, you know, be upset with me. This is my job and I kind of got to do it. <laughs> so. Thank you for understanding and uh, I will see you in the next video in the next houseplant section. Don't forget to take your meds uh, and drink your water and I'll see you later. Goodbye. I do love you. Uh, so yeah.